Good day, everybody. Um, tonight's lecture is really about uh, two key things. I want to spend some time introducing how we're going to cover this second lecture content remotely. Uh, it has been a fantastic time here in Australia. Uh, Jackie did a great speech, and I hope at some point through the class you'll get to meet and interact with her. Um, but she really helped to frame the issues. Here we are in Australia, 68 years after the National Congress of American Indians was formed, and the Australian First Peoples are launching an organization much like NCAI to be a um, strong unified voice uh, for tribal nations and it's a really exciting thing uh, to be here in Australia um, though I do regret that we're doing this over um, over video rather than uh, in person so tonight I want to do two things I want to give you an overview of tonight's coursework how I'd like you to spend your Thursday night when we're not together physically and then I'd like to give you an overview of the syllabus so we get a chance to go over that. Um, so tonight there are four major things that I need you to cover. The first is to read the introduction to the State of Native Nations, the text for the class. Um, and then the second one is really three interrelated things. The first thing I want you to do is to watch the State of Indian Nations address delivered by Jefferson Keel in January of this year, a link of which I sent you in the email that you got this YouTube link from. Uh, I also want you to view the response uh, from Senator Lisa Murkowski and I also want you to read a brief piece about tribal energy done by the Center for American Progress. Those three pieces together give you a sense for the way in which Indian country is uniquely placed in the current kind of toxic political and economic environment. When we have people uh, on the right, and admittedly Lisa Murkowski is no longer necessarily on the far right, but people on the right and also people on the left saying tribal energy is the way forward. So there's a unique moment here with Republicans in control of the House, but many of those Republicans representing districts with significant tribes and Democrats in control of the Senate and many of those rural Democrats and even rural Republicans representing states with high native population. So it's a unique political time for Indian country in the national environment as we think about the future of America. Um, and it's also a unique opportunity to take advantage of uh, economic um, comparative advantages that tribes have. Um, so I want you to watch watch those two videos and read that text within that context. Um, and I also am sending you this very exciting piece, um, which I want you, I'll direct you to particular parts of it. Um, it's something we'll talk about, I think, through the class. It's a piece written by two senior officials, both formally and currently at the Pentagon, talking about the way in which America needs a new 21st century narrative. So the 20th century narrative was around policy, was focused around the Cold War, um, it was focused around kind of military ascendancy for the United States. Um, and the 21st century is different. The 21st century America needs to be thinking about global competitiveness. And America needs to be thinking about strategic investments in domestic policy that build the, the verbiage that I love in that paper is that build sustainable prosperity. Uh, so part of the thrust of this class and Native Nations, the global economy and the future of America is about thinking about what does that sustainable prosperity look like in Native Nations and how can sustainable prosperity in Native Nations contribute to the success of America and indeed the global economic success in, worldwide. Uh, so that's tonight. Um, and then I want to go through the syllabus with you. Uh, this also will have been emailed to you along with this YouTube link. Um, so the syllabus kind of gives you an introduction to the course, the course description, and really the course objectives are things that I covered in the lecture earlier this week. Um, this course is about you. It's about building your skills. Um, it's about professional development for you, particularly writing and analytical skills, which will be useful no matter what your career will be. So you don't have to have a career in policy or a career in economic development for what you learn in this class to be helpful. I truly see each and every one of you as young native leaders with a significant contribution to make to your communities. I see you as the best and brightest and I want to invest in you in that way through this class. Um, so that's what the course objectives give you a sense of. We're going to be going over um, both domestic and international indigenous issues but all through a through a frame of giving you the tools that you need and even the networks that you need as I bring guest speakers to the class 
um, to succeed in your career and to make a significant contribution to the future of Indian country. Um, there are learning outcomes there that I'd encourage you to read over. In terms of the student assessment, there are five things uh, that we'll be covering. First, there'll be in-class writing assignments, three in-class writing assignments, uh, which will allow you to build your writing skills in a context that doesn't require you to do any additional work outside of class. Keeping up with the readings will help you in those in-class reading assignments, uh, but it's not essential for you to come uh, with a plan or anything like that. I'm going to give you everything you need in class. So there's three dates listed in the syllabus for those in-class writing assignments. Uh, there's a framing paper. The framing paper is really you're putting together all of the thinking we'll do together about development theories and how they apply to Indian country and how they apply to kind of the theme of the course of uh, the global economy and the future of America. Um, and the framing paper asks you to do a couple of things. It asks you to think about um, your own definition of development. So I'm going to give you a whole range of different models and ask you to talk about them with your peers through the first few lectures. And then as a part of the framing paper, I want you to develop your own theory and communicate that to, to me in the paper. I also want you to think about how that theory of Indigenous development can make a positive contribution uh, to the world. As I talked about on um, Tuesday night's lecture, you saw that um, you know, there are unique moments here in history as we sit here in 2011. We have unique moments around environmental policy, unique moments around economic policy, where indigenous cultures and the indigenous worldview has something unique to offer that the Western worldview isn't getting right. Um, the Western worldview certainly uh, isn't managing the economy correctly. It certainly was unsuccessful in environmental management in the particular kind of acute example of the Gulf oil spill, but also in the broader kind of chronic problem of climate change. Tribal nations, indigenous worldviews, indigenous um, ways of seeing the world um, have unique um, contributions they can make to that space. Um, so that's the framing paper. There's also a capstone pr paper that I'm trying for the first time this year. And this paper is again about acknowledging, <coughs> excuse me, it's about acknowledging, as I said on Tuesday, that we're all in the same boat. I want to provide a framework within which you can um, give feedback um, and deal with the class content in a helpful way, but it doesn't overly burden you. So you'll be given the opportunity to bring research and other thinking into the class, but the writing on that paper will be done in the classroom on our final class. Uh, I'll also ask you to do oral presentations. Uh, you'll be assigned a policy issue that is covered in the lectures and you'll be asked to kind of help lead a discussion, uh, present data and then lead a discussion. And that's really about just again building your communication skills. Uh, attendance and participation is very important to me um, and very important to success I believe in the workplace and obviously success in this class. And so I, I give a significant portion of the grade, more than some classes you may have experienced, uh, for class attendance and participation. And um, I expect you to be here. I expect you to only miss one class as one excused absence, and I'd love for you to miss none of the classes. Uh, I work hard to make sure that the class content is exciting, that we only stay as long as we need to, uh, but that we also cover the content in a way that honors um, the overall kind of professional development that uh, the WINS program has in mind for you. Uh, so you should expect to be there for the whole class time. Sometimes we'll be able to finish early. Uh, sometimes we'll work out ways of covering content um, offline, out of class. Um, but that's basically the framework in terms of class attendance. Um, there are some guidelines there about um, classroom guidelines. There's some really specific information about what I expect in written assignments, and I'll talk about that more as we get closer to the written ex assignments, uh, but please take some time to, to look that over. Um, the course outline gives you a sense of um, the text that we've chosen, The State of Native Nations, a fantastic book. Um, Miriam Jorgensen and the gang there at the Harvard Project just have a really fantastic um, set of relationships in Indian country. And so the book, one of the strengths of it, I believe, uh, is that it covers the theory and the data well, but it also provides stories that can really put meat on the bone for you in terms of thinking about um, development in Indian country and also how that development relates to the global economy and the future of America. Um, there are two themes. We kind of talk about um, 
theories of development, as I talked about in terms of the framing paper, and then we apply that to policy. There's this notion that some of you may be aware of if you have a health background called health in all policies, which talks about the fact that whether it's education or economic development, that thinking about how it impacts health uh, is a really important way to go forward. Um, and in my view, uh, there's a sense in which um, development cuts across a range of different policy areas. As we think about leadership development, how does that impact the future of the community? How does that affect economic development? Education, how does that affect development? Health, um, and a range of other issues, land, natural resources. Uh, so we'll be going over that as kind of the second component of the class. Um, the overview of the lecture topics and readings, um, I'm going to be posting a lot of these readings and lecture topics on um, on the Blackboard site and we'll talk more about that when I'm physically with you next week. Um, but the overview gives you a great sense. SONN is obviously the abbreviation for the State of Native Nations and you won't need any um, additional papers that I can't send you until everything's uploaded on Blackboard. So I'll make sure that you have everything you need uh, to cover these assignments. I would be pleased for you to email me any questions that you might have about uh, the course outline, the course content, following the overview of the lectures, topics, readings, etc. Um, there is um, an academic integrity code, difficulties and disabilities statement, the emergency policy, and also the policy. And you'll find that um, I want to be flexible. I'll give you more detailed um, pieces of each of the lectures as we go along from week to week. Um, so you'll have the kind of handouts and other information you need. Uh, but this syllabus is really a guide. It's a general plan. Um, and I reserve the right mostly in response to some of the priorities I'll be able to hear from you through the emails that some of you are still sending in um, and also through um, some of the conversation we'll have when I get back. Um, to tailor some of the course content to some of the key priorities you have. Uh, one final thing I'll note is that on, um, on July 5th, just after the July 4th weekend, we'll hold one of what's been one of the highlights for the course um, in previous years, which is a night at the embassy. I'll invite you all to come a little bit earlier than our normal class time uh, to the NCAI Embassy of Tribal Nations. We'll have some of the key leadership at NCAI on issues related to the work that we're covering in the class. And we'll um, have a kind of pizza dinner or a dinner of some kind, and you'll get a chance to kind of interact with and hear about the work that goes on at NCAI. And for many students, that's been a highlight. And like I said uh, earlier in the week, a number of students who've worked with me in the past through this class have ended up working at NCAI, uh, so it's a nice way to meet the team and get an understanding of the work that we do. Uh, I think that's it for now. Um, please do make sure you go through each of those different pieces for this week, um, the reading of the, the introduction to the book, the State of Indian Nations address and response, uh, the energy piece that the Center for American Progress put together, and the strategic narrative piece. Um, I am also going to email you an assignment that I expect you to send me about a paragraph just responding to that uh, so I know you get it and have had a chance to kind of ingest it. And that will be a part of your classroom participation. So please do pay some attention to how you prepare that for me. Uh, thank you so much for your flexibility. I know that uh, watching a YouTube video isn't nearly as exciting as meeting together in class. Uh, I hope this is helpful for you. I hope you're able to um, get some good content out of these uh, links that I'm sending you. And I really look forward to meeting each of you in person next week. Uh, thanks very much and we'll talk soon.